So thanks everybody for, for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Elise Ferroni. Uh, I think uh, actually today we have a presenter for the presenter because we have uh, Dr. Simone Righi that will be presenting Elise Ferroni as they uh, were doing the PhD together in uh, Namur University. Uh, so this is the fourth uh, FCA seminar. Uh, this week is quite dense because we there is another uh, Center for Doctor of Training seminar, uh, I think in at the end of the seminar, and there is another seminar tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, from Professor Fabrizio Lillo. So it's, I mean, it's great to start the year like, like this. Uh, if, uh, I don't know if I told you, so we have a Twitter page. If you haven't followed it, please follow it, because you will find out about all these seminars. You will find links for the paper that we talk about. You will find links for the code that we use. Uh, so we will advertise and talk about our research on the Twitter page, and I think it's a very good way to keep updated, so I really encourage you to follow the page and to interact with it even better. Uh, and after saying that, I will just uh, leave the word to Simona and say a few words on. Yes. Yeah. Elias uh, has, recently, uh, has recently become uh, assistant professor at the University of Bologna, the Department of Economics, and uh, before that he was a postdoc there for Yes, I guess. Uh, this is uh, actually extremely fast for the Italian standards. Uh, so, I mean, this is also a testimony of the quality of, of his work. Uh, I had the opportunity actually to, to work with Elias on uh, two papers. Uh, one is now published on management science, and the other one is still in the air. Uh, um, and uh, we actually worked together for the last five years now, no? basically. Uh, so, uh, it's a pleasure to have him here today speaking about one of his specialties, which is actually the study of two sided markets uh, and the, the relationships with the digital economy, which is one of our focus research topics uh, here at the, uh, at the FCA. So, uh, thank you very much and please uh, enjoy. Thank you. Uh, so, welcome everybody and uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, so, I'm going to present uh, a paper which is a theoretical paper in economics. So I try to be as clear as possible and I, I, I hope you will appreciate what I'm presenting. Uh, so the, the, the paper is a joint work with the two junior co-authors who are both in, uh, in Brussels. One, uh, live, they live in Brussels, who are both in Belgium. One is in Lupin and the other one is uh, working at uh, Compax Lexicon, which is, uh, 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 which is uh, <coughs> a firm interested in uh, giving uh, uh, advices uh, or, uh, when we have antitrust uh, uh, problems uh, to firms, okay, to other firms. So let me uh, start with the motivation of the paper. Uh, so what uh, the paper is about, the paper is about agents who are important with respect to other agents. What do I mean by this? I mean simply that we have many agents operating in market we, who are I mean, in general, agency markets are heterogeneous, okay? So we have very different, very different agents in terms of value they create in the market, and so in terms also of market power vis-a-vis -vis other market participants. And in many industries, this is basically uh, like, uh, this is something that uh, comes like as a, as a large capture over consumers, okay? So you can imagine, for example, in traditional markets such as for example, sport broadcasting or shopping mall, in which you have some very important players who are much more important for, the, for, for, for consumers than others. Okay, so you can think of primers when you think of, about the uh, retail market, or you can think of Real Madrid or Juventus in sport broadcasting. So we have a difference between, for example, I don't know, Barley and Manchester United when you are broadcasting a match of one of these two teams. And, uh, and also, it's much more important in the digital market, okay? So, for example, think of apps, WhatsApp and Messenger are much more important than other apps, or Disney and Marvel in the video, in the video industry, in the music uh, streaming industry, you can think of Beyoncé, Taylor Swift, Drake, and some, and, and some others of these as very important players who have basically a very important role in, in these markets and, are, and have very much market power when they have to somehow contract uh, okay, the, 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 the issue of the content. Okay? And I, I, we call in the paper, these economic agents are superstars. Okay? And, uh, 
And basically, uh, this is just uh, uh, so, so how these people reach audience, they usually reach audience in many of these markets by means of two sided platforms. So we have these platforms uh, which are called in, in the economy. Uh, in the economic literature to sites simply because they basically uh, enable normal interaction between different sites or group of people, okay? And so typically we have many markets which basically work like this. So for example, think of operating systems in which you have users on one side and developers on the other side. Uh, consider the streaming market, you have users on one side and content providers on the other side. You have credit cards in which we have owners on one side and merchants on the other side, and shopping malls as well, in which you have the number of shops on the one side and the number of, of consumers on the other side. And what is the, the, the main characteristics of this uh, uh, intergroup relationship is that we have cross-group network externalities, meaning simply that I care about other consumers entering the market simply because if more consumers enter the market, then also other people on the other side come on the market, and what, what, which is what I do really care about. About, okay, and so basically there is this feedback effect going on, which, which are basically somehow self-reinforcing, self-reinforcing mechanisms, and, uh, uh, and and they create basically value on the two sides, and we have like cycles, okay. And in these markets, clearly the presence of superstars is fundamental, okay, because they they are basically they are they, they have market power. Why? Simply because they create a huge value on the other side of the market, and so they can they can somehow put on the table when they are bargaining uh, on whether to enter a platform or not. They, they can basically put this value on the table and then basically they can create these, uh, uh, these very good cycles uh, giving a, a competitive advantage to the platform who has the opportunity to have uh, the content of these superstars. So, and uh, in general, in this market, uh, we have a general trade-off, okay, which is very important for these superstars. And the trade-off is between single homing and multi-homing. So when we have more than one platform present in the market, an agent can decide whether to go only on one platform or, or to go on all platforms. And the trade-off from the economic point of view is simply that if you go to all platforms, you reach the largest possible audience. But on the other hand, if you go only to one platform, you basically create a competitive advantage for for this platform, and then you can extract more surplus from, from that platform somehow. To put it differently, if I am a very important artist and I go only on one platform, with me, okay, I put also all the people that will follow me because I'm, because I'm very important from the other side. And then for this reason, this platform is going to have, on the, on, the, on the final good market, this platform is going to have a, a, a competitive advantage, so higher profits, so more money, and so I can get a, a, a much favorable contract from, from, from this platform. And basically what we study in this paper is exactly this trade-off. And we try to understand under which condition in the market a platform prefer, uh, so, uh, sorry, a superstar prefers to go only on one platform or to uh, multi-home in different platforms. Uh, so exclusives uh, are important in general in market. Uh, for example, if we think of uh, Netflix, uh, Netflix invested $8 billion in 2018 on exclusive content. So it's uh, kind of a very important uh, subject and also very new because there are many of these exclusives going on in many different markets. And, uh, uh, and there is also uh, many, there are many, many articles uh, in the press, uh, uh, especially specialized press, uh, discussing the, the, the fact that we have these exclusive wars, especially in markets in streaming markets. Okay? So the paper is not about streaming markets uh, uh, only, but, but still, streaming market is a very, uh, bench, a very important benchmark to look at. So I know the, the word superstar there, referring to Taylor Swift. Uh, I think in your paper, for clarity, it would, it would be Spotify who's the superstar, right? That's just a coincidence. Uh, yes, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, so, and what uh, I want you to also, okay. So the point is, on the one hand, so we, we are interested in understanding what, what, I mean, what is the main determinant behind the, this decision to go exclusively on one platform or to multi home And on the other hand, we want to know whether this is positive or negative in the market. Positive or negative in which sense, meaning what is the welfare effect of this? Welfare effect meaning welfare of all parties 
who are present in the market and welfare in terms of total wealth. Okay? And uh, in general, the, the, there are people on the ground saying basically that we maybe saying that in general uh, these, uh, these exclusive are bad. Okay, and, and they are bad because uh, if an artist decides decide to be exclusively on one platform, this is going to be negative for, all, for, for the whole industry, okay, for other artists. It's going to be negative for, for the consumer. So think of a consumer who, who is going to be present only on one platform, and then uh, his favorite artist uh, turn out to uh, sign an exclusive contract with another platform, and so that guy remains without uh, access to the to, to his favorite content, and this is very bad also for the industry. Okay, this, is, this was the point, for example, of uh, the, uh, the head of creator service, Troy Carter of Spotify, who was saying exactly this. But after two years, two years uh, after this, uh, this statement, Spotify uh, had uh, an exclusive deal with Taylor Swift, which is used, by the way, I, I didn't know Taylor Swift before uh, studying this subject, but Taylor Swift is used as the most important example of uh, uh, very important uh, of a very important singer not present in any platform. Okay, and so in the end, Spotify ended up uh, um, taking the exclusive about the contents of Taylor Swift, who apparently is a is a beautiful singer, but uh, I mean I don't know the <laughs> the songs. The songs uh, not, not at all. And uh, and there are also uh, policy uh, uh, antitrust uh, and government. Uh, 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 policymakers, antitrust, and government expressing uh, some uh, some concerns about uh, the fact that uh, these uh, uh, that these practices are bad for for the for the music industry. Okay. So what we do with the paper, we provide a, a, a general model of platform competition, and we want to study these contractual terms uh, of an agent with market power, which we call superstar. So the paper is general, uh, okay, so it, it, it applies to any kind of situation in which we have these uh, important players going on, on, on the market in a, in a market which is to side it, but uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the application is very clear to the streaming industry. Uh, and we, st we study this idea of market coverage versus revenues from exclusivity, and we want to know which effect dominates and under which condition, and we do it by uh, basically uh, adding, uh, by, so by introducing another mechanism that we call ripple effect. Okay, and here I, I wrote exclusivity triggers more exclusivity, simply meaning that. Uh, so if you consider a situation in which in which we start from a symmetric situation in which uh, uh, we have two platforms, for example, uh, both having the same uh, uh, the same precise content, and then a superstar comes. If the superstar goes exclusively on one platform, this basically has a first order effect, which means some consumers will follow the superstar. A second order effect, which, which means that we have also some small content providers who want to follow the crowd and then they also go to the same platform. And this is going to attract other consumers and other, other content providers and so on and so forth. And so we have this, uh, uh, this uh, self reinforcing mechanism going on when we have exclusivity. And, uh, so depending on uh, how this ripple effect is strong in the market, okay, then in the end, uh, uh, we will have exclusivity or not. And then we want, uh, we want also to participate to the debate about uh, whether uh, these uh, exclusives are, are uh, bad or, or good. So I don't, I don't want to spend the time on the literature, but just to see, uh, just to uh, give you uh, some uh, some uh, ideas of what this literature is going on. Basically, this literature was started with the two-sided market literature in the early 2000, uh, and there are many 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 papers uh, published very well in, in in economics. And basically, the idea here is simply that uh, we have these platforms, which are basically only a way to internalize some externalities between the groups uh, present in the market. And the idea is simply that when these platforms have to uh, develop the business, they basically have to attract both sides of the market. And so we have like a chicken and egg problem because uh, you have somehow to, uh, to reach a critic mass on the one side of the market in order to have people on the other side of the market. And in the end, what uh, uh, basically uh, is going to be determined by this is that we have a, a price structure which is different from, a, from the price 
from a, a unique price that you see in markets in general. And the idea is simply that if a side is more interested in reaching the other, in reaching the other side, it, it will be charged more, okay? And the side which is more important from the other side will be subsidized or charged less, okay? So this is the main uh, idea behind the two-sided market literature. And then uh, we also participate to all this, this literature which is very, very new, so uh, very recent papers on exclusivity, studying exclusivity in markets which are you know, one-sided, <coughs> two-sided, and especially the, uh, their, their effect from web. Okay, so the industry, so let me introduce uh, the model. So we have an industry which is uh, like this. So we have consumers who can go to platform one or to platform two. We have content providers who can do the same, platform one or platform two. And we have the superstar who has to decide whether to go on platform one, on platform two, or on both platforms, okay? So we have a situation in which without the superstar, the competition between these two platforms is, platforms is completely symmetric, okay? And when the superstar comes, the superstar man can decide whether to keep this uh, uh, competition symmetric, basically uh, selling uh, his content to both platforms, or to go, for example, only to platform one, and this will create some, uh, some asymmetry in the market, okay? And platforms compete a la hoteling, and uh, I will explain you what, what, we, what we mean by hotel because um, maybe not uh, everybody is uh, familiar with this, uh, with this audience. So basically, the idea is simply the following. We have one platform located at the, point, at, at the, at the initial point of a, of, a, of a unit length line. We have another platform on the other point, on the other extreme. And basically, each point here represents a relative preference of a consumer towards uh, towards the, uh, the service of platform one or the service of platform two. And so basically, the demand here is simply formed by looking at uh, uh, basically consumers who are basically, I mean, everything is equal, so we consider that we have the same content, same prices and everything. In this case, we will have that people who are basically on the right of one half are gonna buy, are gonna subscribe to, uh, to the service of platform two, and people who are on the left are gonna subscribe to the service of platform one, platform one, okay? And then the demand is formed like this. So you have this cutoff, and then people on, on the right go to the one platform, and people on the left go, go to the other platform. And basically, the platform here compete on, on, the, on basically two dimensions. So one dimension is to attract content in order to uh, to, uh, to, to, to move this cutoff and gain more demand, and the other one is price, okay? And so, basically, what happens is simply that they have, they will have a, a, a profit, okay, depending on also on what the other, the other is doing, which is determined by the subscription price, the demand, and eventually uh, also the payment of the fee. The payment of uh, okay, sorry, this is not clear. So here is the fee which is which is gonna be paid to a superstar whenever the superstar is present. Okay, so this G takes value one when the superstar is there and value zero when the superstar is not there. Okay. Uh, so okay, so the superstar, what do I mean by superstar? The superstar is simply somebody who has a very large capture over consumers, and this large capture of the consumer gives uh, to have market power vis-a-vis -vis the platforms. What do I mean by market power? I mean that this uh, uh, superstar can go to a table and bargain, and bargain uh, basically in the following way. Okay, the bargaining power is entirely in the end of the superstar. So the superstar can come to a, to a table with the, with the platform and say, okay, do you want my content? Okay, this is the price. If you accept the price, it's okay, otherwise I, I can go to another table and the fee. And so basically, we have a ticket to limit offer, okay? And uh, what is the objective of the superstar is simply to maximize this fee, okay? And, and also there is an additional value that the, 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 the superstar can have in the, in, the, in the platform given by how many people I can reach on the other side of the market. With this gamma being simply how much, I can, how much money I can, I can make out of each consumer, okay? And so we will have a situation in which when we have exclusivity, 
the platform, uh, the, the, the platform who receives uh, the offer is only platform I, I for example, and then the fee will be one. And when we have uh, uh, no exclusivity, the superstar maximizes the audience, so I reach everybody, and I receive twice the, the fee. Okay? Okay. Okay, so we have, we have also in the market other co uh, content providers. And so these other content providers, we assume them to be small. So to be to not to have any uh, any uh, market power, okay. So they they just go uh, in the platform which giving which is giving them uh, no, okay. They go in a platform if the platform gives them access to a sufficient number of of consumers, given that they have a fixed cost, okay, to produce uh, something that is. Uh, uh, it is good, I mean, something that is, for example, technologically uh, compatible with, the, with that platform, okay? And this uh, 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 production cost is uh, idiosyncratic, okay? So each uh, uh, content provider has a different, uh, uh, a different cost, and, and, and basically the distribution of this cost is uh, a uniform distribution between zero and one, okay? This basically allows us simply to say that there, there will be so it's just a way to say that there will be some content providers who will be out of the market. Okay, out of the market simply because the fixed cost is too high. Okay, and so basically <coughs> what we have is that the number of these content providers is nothing more than the probability of this F to be lower than the value that the platform is giving to them. Okay, and basically uh, we'll have here, we will have here something that basically expresses expresses exactly what I was saying before. So uh, the point is that the number of content providers will depend on the number of consumers on the other side. Okay? And since also consumers are going uh, to value, uh, give value to the number of, of, of them, we have these self reinforcing mechanisms going on uh, on the two sides of the market. So users, who are the last, uh, finally, the last agent, the last uh, group of agents present in the, in, in, uh, in the model. So we have a unit mass of users, and they are, uh, again, uniformly distributed along the line that I described you before. So the line, the hoteling line, in which the two platforms are, 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 are at, the, at the extreme. And so basically, uh, agents care about three things. They, the price they are paying, the number of content providers they can find uh, on the other side of the market, small content providers, and this is valued theta, which is a parameter, exogenous parameter. The presence of the superstar, so if the superstar is present, this, is the, this takes value one, otherwise it takes value zero. And this is how much the superstar is, uh, is, uh, is worth for the other side of the market. We have a fee, which is the, uh, uh, I mean the, the, the utility given by the access to the service. And the last term represents the idea that you have to move to go to the other, to, uh, to, to the platform location, and so this is simply the, 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 the cost of this, the cost of distance, so the transportation cost. Clearly, this tau is something which is, uh, which is uh, uh, very relevant in this model, which is the most, is the most important parameter, and represent the transportation cost, if you think of this as a geographical uh, kind, of, uh, kind of way of thinking, but you can also interpret as uh, the market power that firm has. Okay, because the higher is this tau, the more platforms okay, uh, basically uh, have some captive consumers in, in, in the ones that are very close to, to, to its location. Okay? Uh, and differently, is if, if this tau goes down, platforms compete much more because, because uh, even a, 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 a very small price differential can, can basically attract people who are very far away from, from my location as well. Okay, uh, and so basically this is the utility of an agent who wants to uh, decide whether to enter platform I, okay? So the model basically is a, a, is a, a game theoretical model, and so what we have, we have, we have sequential, sequential situations in which we have the superstar who decides whether to offer the content to which platform and uh, uh, what is the optimal contract, 
Then we have the platforms. The platform will uh, decide whether accept or reject the offer. Each platform decides if the offer comes. Then we have this price competition. So once uh, uh, the, the, the content of the superstar is there, then there is the price competition. And then we have all the, the, these two sides of the market going to one platform or the other, depending on their, on their, on, on their, on their preferences. So in brief, what, what we have in hotel is simply a situation like this. I, I already explained it uh, before, I think. But the point is that we have that when you are a, a, a user and you are uh, uh, located, at, for example, at point X, you decide whether to buy or not, just comparing the utilities. And so basically, if you uh, uh, go to platform Y, you have this utility, and you compare this with this one, and then basically, you, you, you see if uh, this is higher than this, it simply means that you are on the right of this uh, indifferent, uh, indifferent point. And so this indifferent point, if everything is equal, is one half. But if you attract more, uh, more uh, uh, content, or if you set a lower price, or if you, uh, if you have the superstar with you and not uh, with, with your competitor, this can be moved. Uh, on the right, for example, and the demand of platform one will be higher. Okay. So uh, let me. So what we do usually in, in these game theoretical models is basically to start from the very last, uh, from the very last stage, and then go back by uh, uh, by backward induction. And so basically, when something occurs here, all the agents involved in the in the game here. Are going to take into account what is going to what is going to be the effect of what is chosen here in the next step, okay? And so I will give you first the first result, which is about the price competition. So what you are doing here, you are competing, you are competing with another platform as a platform, and then basically you take into account what is the what, what is the, your optimal reaction to any price chosen by the other platform. Okay, and so here, this function here simply represents your best reply. Okay, for given price of the other platform, if the, the other platform increases the price, then you can increase your price because the other platform is basically accommodating you and, and not, being, not being aggressive. Okay, and if the price goes down, you want to decrease your price. Uh, and so the other elements are this one is the tau, so the tau is the market power again. So if this uh, this tau is, high, is higher, you can charge higher prices, okay, clearly, because the, if the, the transportation cost for consumers is, is, is more, more relevant. Then you have this part, which is simply uh, something that is related with this cross-group network externality. So I, what I was telling you before, uh, earlier, was that basically, in terms of price structure, if a side Okay, it's more important to the other side. So if this gamma goes up, then this price goes down. Okay? Okay, why? Because I simply care, okay, I, I'm very important for the other side of the market. So if gamma goes, goes up, and then the price that the platform offers to me is lower because I'm very important for the platform. Okay? And then we have this additional term, which is what we, basically we are adding to the literature, which is simply the fact that if the superstar is there or not. Okay? And as you can see here, the point is that when we, when we consider a situation which is symmetric, okay, so if, uh, for example, both, I mean, if the superstar is not there, okay, or the, or the superstar is there in both platforms, the result is exactly the same in the price competition, which means, uh, which means, uh, which means simply that uh, uh, what is happening is that if the superstar goes to both platforms, since they are competing, okay, this value is not taken at all by these platforms. Okay, so the, the price competition will be exactly the same. The price should not, I mean, will not reflect the presence of the superstar. Okay, so you are basically giving more value to your consumers. Okay, you are paying something to the superstar. Okay, because you have to uh, to pay for the content without having any benefit in terms of uh, uh, in terms of, of final prices so there is no price uh, uh, no uh, pass through in prices as, i mean because the platforms are competing okay 
And, uh, and basically what happens on the two sides of the market is that uh, when we are in this symmetric situation, we are like uh, all people above one half are gonna, are gonna go to platform uh, two, or people, uh, and all people below are gonna buy, are gonna subscribe the service of platform one. Platform one. And what happens on the uh, other side of the market, so on the, on the uh, content provider side, we will have zero homers and multi homers. So these content providers, since they are, they are all interested in the people they can find on the other side of the market. They just go in both platforms because they are because they are interested in the interaction. Okay, and so basically we have people with high uh, uh, high production costs who uh, who stay out of the market, and people with uh, uh, low uh, production cost uh, who enter the market. Okay, so now if we go when uh, uh, if we go to the situation in which uh, we have exclusives. What happens is basically that the, 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 we have, I mean, the price, the prices will simply reflect this asymmetry. So the price uh, in which the superstar is exclusive on will be higher, and uh, uh, and the price and the demand as well. Okay. And what what, what is happening is the ripple effect that I, that I uh, uh, told you about. Uh, the beginning of the presentation. So the idea is that you, you have, we have this direct effect on consumers and this indirect effect on the other side of the market. So the superstar comes, people follow the superstar, content providers follow the people, and people follow the content providers and so on and so forth. Okay? And so we have a situation which is which is like this. So the market composition changes. We have uh, the, the demand of platform one becomes higher than one, so there is this asymmetry. And on the other side of the market, the number of non-active uh, uh, content providers shrinks, and then we have some of uh, some of them is going to be single owning on on the platform with exclusive content, and we have also a shrink on the number of multi uh, uh, um, uh, content providers. And so now the point is to understand what is the optimal decision of the superstar. Okay, and the point is that uh, there is a trade-off, okay, as I told you at the beginning of the presentation. The trade-off is simply given by the fact that even if, even if uh, uh, apparently I can generate more money going only on one platform because this, this is going to be reflected in the final market, okay, still as a platform I have something to, uh, I mean, I have something to gain to go to both platforms, okay, because there is uh, this idea of reaching the maximum possible audience. Okay? And uh, uh, basically, the contract is just something that basically, I mean, when uh, a platform goes uh, to, uh, to, to the table, to, to, bar to the bargaining table, the idea is to understand, I mean, to induce the, uh, the counterpart to accept the contract. Okay? And so the point is that. Uh, the fee, the payment, will be, uh, as, uh, I mean, will be as high as possible, compatible with the counterpart accepting the contract. And then what is important is simply to understand what is the outside option of, 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 of the, the counterpart. And the outside option, in, in, our, in our model, we assume that this outside option is simply to be the, uh, the, the to be the platform without the superstar content in a situation of a, in, a, in an asymmetric situation. To put it differently, the superstar goes to the to the table saying, "Okay, I'm offering it to you this contract, uh, this contract. So my content and this is the price. If you don't accept, I go to your rival, and your rival will accept the contract. And then you will be in a uh, in a uh, disadvantageous position in the, in the final market. And given this." What uh, we find is basically that uh, the, the payment okay, that the superstar can receive going uh, and propose the contract exclusively on one platform is higher than twice the payment that can be received going to both platforms. Okay? And this is simply because it is not passed through in prices and then basically you have this. And uh, the decision between the two will depend on how much effectively uh, the platforms are competing in the final market. So how much the competition is tough. Okay, so the transportation cost. 
okay, if the transportation cost is low, okay, then platforms compete very strongly in the market, okay, and then what happens is basically that it's very easy to move people from one platform to the other, okay, because the transportation cost is low, and then exclusivity will be better, okay? And differently, when this tower is very high, this, the ripple effect becomes become less important because you cannot move many people because the, 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 the platforms are not, are, are not competing too much, and then we have that the contract will be non-exclusive, okay? Uh, so, just a few words on, on, the, on all the sites involved, on all the agents involved in the, in, the, in the market. So, basically, what happens for, uh, to, the, uh, to the platforms is basically they are in a kind of a price on a dilemma, okay? Because since they are not passing, the, uh, uh, passing uh, directly to, to the price, okay, the presence of the superstar, they would have preferred to stay in a situation in which the superstar goes out of the market directly. So staying in the symmetric situation without, uh, without, without accepting uh, the contract. But the point is that the individual incentive of each platform is to accept the contract. Okay? And so basically we are in a situation in which, uh, from the point of view of, of a platform, basically you want to enjoy a competitive advantage when the offer is exclusive. Is exclusive okay? And you want to avoid that your rival will enjoy will enjoy this uh, competitive advantage in case of non exclusive So this threat will be uh, the determinant of the choice of the platform. Uh, of CBS of the platform. Uh, and then on the, on the other two sides of the market, clearly we have a positive effect on the small content providers. Why a positive effect? Because small content providers can basically, uh, uh, we have more content providers active in the market with respect to a situation in which the, the superstar uh, 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 is in, a, in a, uh, under non exclusivity in a symmetric situation. And uh, in terms of consumers, we will have basically three categories of people. So imagine that we have an exclusivity on platform I, okay, and consider we have, we have three possible categories of people. The first one is, is composed by people that would, in any case, uh, uh, subscribe to platform I. Okay? Even if, uh, no matter whether the, the market is symmetric or asymmetric. Okay? So no matter whether the, the, the superstar is exclusive or not. In this case, clearly these guys are losing by exclusivity. And why? Because they pay higher prices, okay, but they are receiving the same value. Okay? Because the, the super still, they are receiving the same value. We have loser, we have another category of loser who are people who are in the, in the other, in the, in, precise, in, the, in the opposite situation, so they always uh, uh, subscribe platform J, and then clearly exclusivity, uh, they pay lower prices, it, it is true, but they also receive a lower value. And, and, and when they receive a lower, a lower value, this second effect dominates always in our model. Okay? And then we have winners, and the winners who are? The winners are the switchers, so people who basically decide to change their mind. So it's as if you are in a situation in which you subscribe to platform two, for example, and then your favorite artist is on the other platform, and then if you move there, okay, you receive a value which is higher than the difference in price that you are paying, and so you are, you are better off, okay? And then the number of these people strongly depend on this star, okay? So this is even without, uh, uh, there's no specific strategy to target the, the, the switchers. Uh, no, 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 absolutely so, uh, not. But the, 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 how big is the number of these people depend on, on this DAO. So on how much is costly to move from one platform to the other. Okay? And so we have, basically, uh, we can have different kinds of situations. So this is just a graph that put on the horizontal axis the gamma, which is uh, how much a consumer is important for the other side, and on the vertical axis, this tau, okay? And as you can see here, this blue curve is uh, the indifferent curve between uh, the, uh, the exclusivity and the non-exclusivity, and so above, as you can see, exclusivity is non-exclusivity always benefits consumers, and then we will have another curve that here is this one that basically represents when consumers are, I mean, would prefer exclusivity. So when the number of these winners is sufficiently high to
to compensate for the, loss, the, the losses of all the others. And so basically here, this graph has to be read as, uh, uh, as follows. This blue, dark blue, is uh, uh, this dark blue, and this uh, red are two areas in which what is doing uh, uh, the superstar is precisely what the consumers prefer. And here we have a misalignment of incentives between, between the superstar and the consumers. Uh, so the paper <coughs> is quite robust to extension, so this result is going to be there always, even if we, if we assume uh, and we consider situations which are, uh, which, are, uh, which are present actually in the market. The first one is the idea of multi-homing consumers, and I will explain you why it is important. Uh, the second one is pricing also content providers. So, so far the mod in the model it is assumed that content providers just go there to meet people on the other side, but they don't, not, not, they don't pay to enter and they are not paid to, to be there, okay, to, 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 for their content to be available in the platform. And uh, the, the model is also robust to a situation in which we have more than one superstar. So one may think that basically you have one superstar going on, on, a, uh, on, a, on a platform and the other one may have incentive to go to, adapt to the other platform to resymmetrize the market and then gain more. This, not, this is not what is going to happen. Okay, so the, the, the mechanism that we have uh, resists also to this situation. So multi-homing consumers are important for this reason. Basically, in a situation of multi-homing consumers, we are the people. Uh, we have the people closer to which platform are going to buy are going to subscribe the service of the, of the platform, and people in between may, be, uh, may decide to pay twice the price and stay in both platforms because, because they can uh, gain more like this. Why is, why is it important, the idea? Because so far we only consider single homers. But why it is important? Well, it is important because consider a situation in which you are in platform two, okay? And then your favorite artist is in platform one. Okay, so the idea of the ripple effect is simply that if the transportation cost is sufficiently low, okay, there will be many people who find their, 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 their favorite artist on the other platform and decide to switch, okay? So stay in this situation. Now consider that now some of these people are multi home okay? Clearly the, the ripple effect would, would be somehow down there, okay? So because it's less important. For, I mean, the switchers are important as far as we have single homers. Otherwise, if we have multi homing, there is no point in switching. And then, in this case, even in this case, even in, even if this case goes against what we are doing, we still have that we have this cutoff. And the, if tau is low, we have exclusivity. If tau is high, we have the opposite. Uh, two sided pricing, the same, this is uh, less important in this audience, I think, but two sided pricing simply means that we endogenize also the choice of platforms to, of the price to the other side of the market, which can be positive or negative depending on the market that you have in mind. So, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in Spotify, which, uh, I mean, in, uh, in the streaming market, it will be uh, posit positive, uh, sorry, negative. In other markets like uh, shopping mall, it can be negative. Uh, can be positive, uh, so it depends a little bit on which market you are considering. But again, the value of the cutoff change, changes, but the mechanism is there. And uh, the last point is this one. I just show you the, 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 the payoff matrix just to give you the idea of how much tedious was the analysis here. So uh, the point is that when we have, for example, two platforms, uh, yes, uh, two platforms and two superstars, this, uh, each superstar can decide to be present in platform I, platform J, or in both, or in both platforms. And this decision is going to be dependent also on what the other platform is doing. So all the profits that we have here and the, and the payoffs that we have here are going to depend on this. And so basically what we do uh, in, this, in this extension, we study all these possible cases and we study, uh, we study under which conditions then each of the two superstars uh, decides whether to go exclusively on one platform or exclusive on the other one, okay? And what we find is basically something that is uh, uh, fairly similar to what uh, I described you before. And in particular, this comes from the fact that we have all, always a symmetric choice, okay? Which means, uh, which means that either we have a symmetric choice that goes towards non-exclusivity, 
Okay, so the idea is that when tau is sufficiently high, both platforms will go to both, uh, sorry, both superstars will go to both platforms. Okay, when this tau is low, we have three possible situations, but these situations are always symmetric. Meaning that if platform uh, A goes, goes to I, also platform, uh, uh, sorry, if uh, superstar A goes to I, uh, also superstar B goes to I, if one goes to J, also the other one goes to J, and if one multi homes, also the other one multi homes. Which simply means that we have this idea of concentrate, like concentration, <coughs> so concentrating all to the, to the same decision. Okay, so this, uh, our result remains true even if we consider. Uh, so we have also a, 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 an extension with many, many superstars, but it doesn't change much, okay? Because the idea is always that you want to, you, you never have a situation in which for given choice of your rival, you want to re-symmetrize the market and go to the, to the rival plan, which is, for me, uh, surprising, uh, uh, intuitively speaking. And so basically, this is what I wanted to, to say to you. So uh, to, just to conclude, so what, what we do with this paper, we have a tractable model of uh, to study market, which is robust to, to different setups, even complicated. And basically, uh, what we have is that we have this ripple effect. So the idea that, uh, uh, the idea that if you enter in a market, then you can reshape as a, as a superstar the market functioning, okay, you can, uh, you, you, you basically decide to reshape this market if you have uh, the possibility to really create this ripple effect and make this ripple effect uh, uh, stronger. And uh, we have also a market expansion effect given by the fact that we have, that, uh, we have some, uh, some agents, typically the content providers with a relatively high production cost that, that would be zero owners in a symmetric market and become single, uh, single owners in this asymmetric market. So we have this market expansion and we have also clearly a conversion effect so people move even switching from one platform to the other. Uh, and we, we have many, I mean, we have, we have plenty of anecdotal evidence of what we are describing in many different markets. And we think also, also that this paper has important policy implications and in particular for what concerns that definition of bad about these, uh, these aspects, okay? And, and that's also why the paper was, I mean, I'm just uh, advertising the, the paper even more. Uh, so the paper was selected, uh, selected to receive an award, which is an antitrust uh, uh, award uh, that will be uh, uh, assigned in March in Washington. And so we are happy for this. And I mean, I think it's relevant also for, for the policy the policy point of view. And by the way, we need votes to win, uh, so I will send you the, uh, the link <laughs> to that. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you very, very much for your question. <laughs> we are close to submission, so if you have any suggestion. So one, of the, uh, one of the things that confused me, uh, perhaps a bit about the presentation in the beginning, was that I wasn't quite sure about what the term superstar referred to, which is why I brought up the question earlier. Uh, and then it became clear that a superstar is actually a, a supplier, if you will, of content um, that can choose which platform to, to, to join. Yes. Or a supplier of a service, or su supplier in general. Yeah, um, supplier. So, yes. uh, so, I, so I guess, it, by, by way of suggestion, I'd say if you could highlight suppliers versus consumers, and just make really clear who you're talking about in each case, just clarify that more, I think that that would, that would make it easier to follow. Um, uh, and I also had a question. Uh, so what the intuition behind this, is this really that um, basically a superstar is effectively capturing the surplus uh, that, would ordinary, that would otherwise have been captured by uh, a platform. Uh, it's actually taking some of that surplus away uh, and no, I didn't. No, okay. you see, you see uh, I didn't discuss. No, I didn't discuss it. But we discussed in the paper. So the, the point is that, uh, and we have we, we have also to work on the intuition about this. But what, what yeah. happens is basically that if you you create a value, and we have that one third of the value goes to the platform and two thirds go to go to the superstar. But we are, I mean, we we, we are not sure, and I didn't discuss here because we are we are not sure of. About what is going on on the, I mean, 
on the same side because there is something, some of the surplus that is going also to. So we so don't know precisely whether, because I mean, you put on the table your value okay, to the consumer, but this value becomes more than this. Because why? Because you have also this cycle, so this feedback effect. Yes. You know? And so then, in the end, quantifying what is going to one side and what is going to the other side, what is going to one, uh, one party, party to the counterparty is not very clear still. It seems like there's dynamic kind of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This because we, we do not put yeah. Because yes. it depends upon the platforms. Like they could, they could sure. look at it as an opportunity to, as going with the superstars, an opportunity to capture all of these other artists or these suppliers um, uh, that would come along afterward. Uh, but it could also be viewed as a threat, right? Like I'm going to take your, your a bit of your surplus away, and if you don't do this, I'm going to go with the others. Uh, I'm going to go with the other platforms. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and and my, my question was whether we could, whether we could view this from the perspective of the the, the two the two sided market, uh, the two sided market maker, the platform, as um, taking surplus from the relationship foundationally between the, the superstar and the consumers. I mean, if the superstar has a number of fans, then you could just invert the story, and you could have it about, you know, how much surplus can a, how much surplus can a a, uh, a, a platform take from a superstar contra yeah, yeah, yeah. a uh, you know contra a relationship that wouldn't have existed before anyway. Yeah, thank you. No, no, you did. Any other question or comment, or you want to connect with this? Uh, no, no, it, it, yeah. uh, actually, it's a very good point. So it, it, it's an important point, and your, I take your suggestion because we, we were discussing, I mean, uh, maybe yesterday with my co-author how to, with my co-authors, how to, on how to explain this, I mean, where is going the surplus precisely and how. So this, this would be a, a way to, to think. Any other uh, comments? Otherwise, we thank uh, Elias and 